So I was wondering about wholesale real estate. And when I saw Jared Clutch post on his story that he was going to host a workshop at his office in San Antonio, Texas, I was all for it. I immediately contacted him and I was locked in. Finders only take advantage of it. You can't stop me. I'm going to need extra coverage. You can't guard me. Good luck. You going to have to. All right, guys, my first workshop. I'm super excited. I'm about to show 14 people how to make 10K a month plus. All right, starting from scratch, none of them have done any deals. I'm super excited. If you've never done a deal and you wanna learn how to do real estate investing and wholesaling, you better stay all the way to the end because this video is gonna teach you how to do it from nothing. All right, stay tuned. I'm super excited for this one. All right, everybody here? All right, damn, we got a packed house today. What's going on? What's up, brother? Hey, y'all, welcome in, welcome in. Y'all come on in. Sorry for making our way, we're getting everything ready. How you doing, bro? How's it going, bro? What's up? You ready for the rodeo today, boy? Oh, uh, yeah, it's rodeo season, bro. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Monica. Hey, what's up? How are you? So, good, good. Y'all ready? Yeah. Thank you for coming. Jaden. So, bro, are you, uh, are you, are you uh, Raphael's? Yeah. yeah. All right. How's it going? So, bro, hey, nice to meet you, bro. Devin. Nice to meet you. All right. Packed house today. I got like wholesale and real estate is just the fastest way to get capital. This shouldn't be the end game. Right? It's like your introduction to real estate investing is what I call it. It's the bottom level, but which is good because this is where, like in order to be a successful real estate investor, all the concepts you learn here apply, right? All the concepts apply. Marketing, sales, um, raising capital. You're raising capital basically for yourself that you keep in the bank fast, right? But also making offers, how to uh, evaluate properties. This is all things that in real estate investing, skills that you're going to apply to the next level. My, my end goal is I want to be a real estate developer and I better believe all this is going to go into that, right? Also connections, relationships. But the good thing about it is it doesn't have to only be like the beginner level. You can turn this into a real business and make it a cash cow, right? We're spitting out over a hundred thousand every month here, every month in an easy fashion. And I can scale it more too. There's a lot to be made. Every single market has like big market like this at least like I'm talking top 10 city in America, a million dollars a month in, in potential wholesale profits every month, eight figure markets. So it can be something little that you can use just to get to the next level, or it could be your cash cow to, to fund your portfolio. So either way, it's how you look at it. How serious do you want to be with it? Like, as you can see, we're serious. I'm not taking this lightly like this, like I'm not going to let it go, you know? So it's all on how you, what, what, what your end goal is. So we always got to start from the end goal in mind. Like, what do you want to become? How big do you want to take it? You got to do little stuff like this. Like when you're building teams, it's, it's like culture, right? It makes it fun to be here. We gamify it. We make it fun. Like it's fun to be here. Like if I'm not in my office, I'm bored. I'm um, just like, I got a project or something, but I love being around my team. You know, we make it fun. That's it from right there. This, this, this is the poster I was talking to you guys about right here. He got a little bit wider arms than me. <laughs> that's it. That's cool, right? Oh, that's an OG Michael Jordan. Po but that's like the famous one that was like on the like magazines and stuff like that. I'm, it's probably worth some money. Like if I look it up, like a signed Michael Jordan one. Hey. Yes, sir. You got the clutch shoes over there. That's my office right here. You see it now, right? Yeah. That's, there's the logo right there, but it's very unique. You know what I mean? The colors and everything. That's lifestyle. Yeah. Crazy. Not at all, bro. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> I box though. I throw some hands. A little bit about me. So the reason I started this, what I'm gonna teach y'all, is because I got so tired of the marketing, the cold calling, all of that. Right? It's very frustrating. How many of y'all have cold called before? It sucks, right? They get burnt out. How many times can you take someone telling you to fuck off? Mm -hmm. Hey, no, well, who told you it was for sale, right? It's so whack. And I was like, why am I chasing all these people wasting eight hours of my day? There's gotta be another way. And, but that's all that people teach, right? That's the only way people teach, but there's another way. And I'm gonna show you the way we do it. We constantly close over $100,000 every single month in fees without doing any marketing. Zero marketing. We do no cold calling. We don't have any virtual assistants. We don't do any data pulling. Zero. We do everything based off relationships, branding, and just being really good at what I'm going to teach you today. Very simple stuff. I feel like I could literally teach a kindergartner how to make money in this business. 
That's the, and I know y'all are going to start doing deals. All right. So a little bit about me before I started in this, um, back sh over 10 years ago, I was, you know, just looking for a way to make money, right? Just looking for a way to make money. And, um, it was hard, right? It's hard when you're starting now looking back now, it's very easy. Everything comes easy. I know so many people I've learned so many skills. Like now we talk about hundred K in a month and I'm like, damn, that's light work. How are we going to get to 200? How are we going to get to 300? But looking back, it was like, fuck, how do I pay for some McDonald's, right? I remember that, right? Like, I, put, I remember going to the gas station, putting five bucks in the tank, and then going to McDonald's and getting a McDouble and a hot and spicy. You know what I mean? That was the move. And now, looking back, I was like, dang, it was really hard. But you know what? All it was was awareness and information. If I would have knew this information back then, I don't know where I would be because it took me a long time to get here. So that's what I'm going to teach y'all, right? What, what I learned in the past 10 years that made it super easy, okay? So now we're flipping. We're doing Airbnbs. I have my mom and my dad working with me. I got my family. It's amazing. Like, all our, like I send them on trips. It's amazing. I paid off their house, their cars. Like, what this did for me was crazy. It was really crazy. So um, when I first started, I didn't have any skills, right? I didn't have any skills at all. And I, I wanted to flip houses. That was me. I, for some, you know how it just it looks sounds sexy, right? Everybody wants to flip houses. Now that I'm in it, I hate flipping houses. It's like this is way easier than flipping a house because flipping a house could take you three months, and then you got to go with the headaches of contractors. You got to go through the headaches of just oh, you thought I was gonna be 30 and it turned out to be 50, and you were supposed to make 30 and now you did all that work for nothing. You know what I mean? And I've been through this over and over and over. So it's more sexy because of the TV shows, all that. It's not what it is. So. Don't get me wrong, still buy houses, but if you're going to go through all that work, keep them. That's what I do now. I keep everything, right? I hold on to the equity. Unless, unless, my, unless my, my strategy didn't go according to plan and I have to sell it, oh, well, I still got the equity to make money. So right here is just the lobby. This is uh, where our tra transaction coordinator stays. This is my office right here. It's the Michael Jordan poster. I want everybody to check it out. That story I was telling you all, that's it right there. It always reminds me of my of staying good, you know, staying a, and uh, having a good heart and really being in this business to help people, that like reminds me every day. So I'm really big on that. I'm really big on uh, just being genuine, being good, being a good person. That'll take you far in life on its own, you know? Like that monitor. Like the monitor? Yeah. See, look, even right here, like I get a little sticker, in the business of good karma. <laughs> I'm serious about this stuff. Like just be a good person, and it's gonna come back, you know? This is our sales floor right here. So this is just, we only work with buyers here. So we qualify buyers, we bring them in meetings. I will show y'all how we qualify buyers and how we, uh, how I think what makes us better in, in selling wholesale deals, but it all starts right here. So these agents right here, they only work with buyers. They don't acquire properties. I really truly believe in focusing on one thing, right? So we're a team. So this is where we focus on buyers. Got a little shark right here because it's the, it's the uh, shark tank, all right? And we throw a piece of meat in here and it's over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right here, we vote every month who went the hardest, your own teammates, and then you get the belt. So this is the clutch belt MVP. All right, so we just finished the workshop part inside the office. Now we're going to go toward two or three of my personal projects. One flip, one house that hasn't been constructed yet, super ugly, and then another Airbnb. So guys, I hope to see you at the next one. We're going to have one of these every single month. Don't miss out, all right? All right, so we just got here to the first house right here. This is a flip right here that we're doing. Uh, we're set. We just listed it on the market yesterday for 235. We bought it for 115, and we put about 25 into it. So it's a good spread on this one, right by the AT&T Center. So the good thing about this one is this had an abandoned house right next door, a, uh, like a little crack house, man. It all boarded up, and they just the city knocked it down. So as soon as the city knocked it down, I said this is our time to flip it, because it was an Airbnb, but I didn't really like the cash flow numbers. So you know what I mean. Uh, so I ended up deciding to do that. And if you can, make sure you get all the all the cars and everything, bro, like, because it looks badass. What's up, bro? It's a Corvette. Yes, sir. You like it? Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. I just Okay, okay. Yeah, we're just moving in. We're just moving in? Yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. My people stay right here. They sold it. Th this house right here? Yeah, right here. They had all this. Yeah, they got rid of it. Oh, that one, they knocked it down, right? Yeah, my people sold it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, it's, just moving in? Yeah, it's moving in. Oh, yeah? Nah, nah, it's just a fan. You know how us Mexicans be? Yeah. <laughs> You'll be seeing me, y'all party and shit. Yeah, all right. Hey, it is. All right, bro. All right, I'm gonna let you. All right, bro. Y'all right. make it on. Y'all, everybody find it, all right? 
Like, y'all having a party in here and everything. <laughs> Shit, y'all got me a beer too, or what? What's up, bro? Where'd you, where'd you come from? What's your name? Devin. Devin you, were, you were there already? You, you weren't at the workshop? Bro, what the hell? How did you just transform like that? Did you have glasses too? Yeah, I had glasses. Dang, that's a whole different person right here, bro. That was the craziest transformation I've ever seen, bro. I literally didn't recognize you. That was wild. All right, so I'm gonna pull out the, the numbers on this one right here. So this is the latest flip. So um, actually, PM is my realtor, so that's kind of funny thing about it. Uh, that's why she knew everything. But this was an actual Airbnb. So I bought this house for 115. We put, I just looked before we came, we put uh, 25,000 in work. So that's all in at 140. And we just listed it for how much? 235. 235. So that's a good little spread right there, right? 235 minus 140, 95. But minus holding costs, minus fees, realtor costs, let's just take off like an easy 15. It's about 80. And then take off a little more just, just to take off. You always take off, right? Like you never, never judge your numbers off like what you really anticipate you're going to make. It's never going to be that, I promise. It's always going to be under. So always take off maybe 20%, honestly, because realtor costs are 6%. You can do it for about 4% as an investor. Uh, holding costs, if you're using hard money, that's a big fee. Um, and then things go wrong. You know, things go wrong. I actually got lucky on this one. So when I bought it, my actual um, ARV was 195. And the market, it, but that was last year when the market was, was rough. And so I got lucky. The market's starting to tick back up, but I bought it in a bad market still because I was nobody was buying. So they were giving really good deals. So I was buying houses. And uh, so the IRV just went up, what, 40K? And the thing was, it had a, there was a trap house, like a little boarded up house next door. Literally just boarded up. There was homeless in there and everything. And I was like, man, that really, you know, it's, it's, it's messing up. So I was going to try to buy it and fix it too to help this house. But the city ended up knocking it down like last week. And as soon as they did that, I called her. I said, we're listing the house. Like now's our chance to strike. So this was an Airbnb. Um, the payment on this would have been... All in, at, I was all in at like one, 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 one fifteen plus twenty five. I would say my payment with taxes, insurance on this house would be about sixteen hundred bucks, more or less. And I was supposed to, we were supposed to get, we were uh, for the very least, we wanted one hundred five a day. And at twenty eight days, that's what we usually rent our Airbnbs out at. That'd have been about three thousand a month. So, so the way I have it set up, I have all my sales agents trying to sell the same property, so they're all racing all the time. I made it like a competition. So that buyer, he was at another house of, of Jesus, that's his buyer, um, and he was trying to buy the house, and they had two other buyers trying to buy the house, so they're all competing. Who gives us the 3500 in the assignment first? So he was there, and he lost out. Somebody else bought it. So that, that's the way I set it up, so everybody's like, it, it puts more leverage on our side. Like, hey, man, you can negotiate all you want, but they're going to buy the full price. You want it or not? Let's go get the check. So that, like, I set it up like that, and it makes it fast. Like, every, that's how, yeah, exactly. That's how we have the shark in there. So on Airbnb as well, if y'all do want to do Airbnb, everything's on Amazon. We got all these bunk beds, mattresses, and everything for like, with the couch table for about 2,500 bucks, furnish the whole house. Yeah, so everything on Amazon, okay? But I want y'all to come check it out. Just 1,500 for labor for each bathroom, 1,500, gut it out and re-put flooring, stand-up shower or tub, vanity, toilet, 1,500 bucks, just labor. That's our price, that's what we pay. You're gonna take some digging for that, right? Because people charge, bathrooms and kitchens are what people charge a lot for. So like, you know, you gotta be, have a healthy company, you gotta pay taxes, it is what it is. But this is why I buy so many houses because I lower my bill every year. Every year I write off all this stuff. So it's just a game you gotta learn. And you're not gonna learn until you have to make a move. And you're gonna mess up. You're gonna mess up on a lot of things. I mess up so many times. Like the only way I learn is like, like I said, for the IRS, the only way I learn is I owed a big bill and I didn't have a lot of my contractors 1099. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, damn, you know what? Now we created a system around it. Before we pay you, before we sign a contract, you come to my office, sign a 1099, copy your ID. Now you're able to work with us. If not, no work. So like you, but you don't know until you don't know, right? Until you, you run into the problem. Same thing with everything. So I think the number one thing is just go. Don't be scared to lose. Don't be scared to fail because you are going to lose and you are going to fail. That's the only way you're going to progress. If you don't move, if you don't lose, if you don't fail, you didn't move. You didn't move up. You stayed exactly where you were. I've made so many mistakes. It is what it is. Nothing killed me. Nothing. Everything just made me smarter, wiser, and able to teach y'all. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? 
and that's the only way you build companies. Somebody, while I was building it, because that's what happens when you're like, you don't like, usually when you're flipping houses, it's in a revitalizing area, right? What do they call that? Regentrification? And you know what, in a regentrifying neighborhood, there's crime, there's bad, like the neighborhoods are turning over and things happen. And this house was so bad, man. Like, I think they broke into like three times. Literally, when I was done, they kicked this door down. That's why we have those two locks right there. And they just came in here like nothing, stole all my wash, my, my both new washer and dryers, some TVs and stuff, and made off clean. Another time, a, a homeless guy broke into one of the windows, and it was so crazy. Everything was here. We're like, oh, what's missing? Like, the window's broken, and we're like, we're looking. Everything was here. TVs, everything, all the expensive stuff. We're like, this is weird. And then we go into the restroom and the rooms, and just the, he just took the blankets, the toilet paper, the towels, and like the uh, knives and like utensils. We're like, what the hell? It was the craziest thing. But I mean, it is what it is. Uh, like, uh, you know, he did what he did. This was a cosmetic rehab. Very easy rehab. We were in and out in three weeks. Then nothing major. But do you see how that could add up? It's cosmetic and I still paid almost 25. Nothing major. I didn't replace roof, HVAC or foundation or plumbing or electrical. And it was still 25,000. So don't underestimate your rehab. It actually seems like a peaceful neighborhood, eh? I don't think it's a bad neighborhood. It's just, it just is what it is, you know? So I was, I was saying, don't underestimate your rehab. We didn't do anything major here. We didn't do foundation. We didn't do plumbing. We didn't do the roof yet. Uh, we didn't do the HVAC or electrical. This is just a cosmetic. We didn't have to do siding and it was still almost 25,000. So when wholesalers tell you, hey, it's only 15,000, don't, don't fall for it. Like I, I'm a wholesaler, so obviously, you know, but they have the reputation of underestimating the rehab. So don't ever, 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 number one rule is take, uh, take advice from a wholesaler that's trying to sell you the deal. Cause that's just like, you know what I mean? Don't believe him, he's just trying to make money. So get your own rehab numbers and have a realtor run the ARV, double check it to what it truly is. That one, I, not even me, because I'm not that good where I could just walk and see if the plumbing's good. You can't, you need a plumber to go in there with the camera and you need a static test to see if the, if the plumbing's good, 150. I, I usually do all of them because they were, this is an older house and it's cedar and th those are, it's hard to pass, like when you flip it, it's hard to pass that inspection and they want you to change it to uh, concrete posts. So I just do everything, might as well, you know, depends if I'm flipping it or not. Um, cause it, it's hard, it's hard to get that, that refinance because people go under there and they see the wood posts and uh, they don't want to buy that, you know, with an inspection report. No, but I still do this to this day. Okay. To this day, I still do it because contractors, they, they fall off their con dude. One thing you learn about contractors, oh, they're the worst. Like it's hard to deal with contractors. Like, yeah, you gotta understand. Con <laughs> hey, but think, <laughs> think, think. You gotta no, no, because I was. I, I, I can talk shit because I was a contractor for many years. Oh man, it was like babysitting trying to keep a crew together. They have the worst habits: drugs, alcohol, drama waking up, like going to jail, like, but you got to understand it's a rough field. You know what I mean? Like think about somebody who does swings a hammer for a living. Like that's a rough person. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like it is what it is. So you're going to, it's so many problems with contractors. They're also kind of immoral, not immoral, not, but you're going to find a lot of unethical ones. So number one, never pay a contractor up front. The floors, everything, like everything's going to get an update. What you want to look for the most on an older house is this box right here. If it has breakers, you're good. That's an updated breaker box right there. I want everybody to see that. The old school style has little fuses. And if it has those fuses, you got to rewire the whole house. That's a $10,000 expense easy just to start. Y'all see that right there? Those are breakers. Those are updated right there. That means the house has an electrical update. Kitchen, uh, our budget usually on the kitchen is no more than three grand. We don't go all out. Like these aren't high end homes. You're not going to want to put a $10,000 kitchen in this neighborhood. It makes no sense. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of people, they overdo it. Like you do what the neighborhood calls for. Like these people aren't expecting marble and you know what I mean? They just want something nice and that's what we give them. So 3000 probably for the kitchen, not including appliances. Everything else is, you already know how much you're gonna pay. The, the big factors are the big four. So you want those guys, really good ones on your team to help you like, hey, yeah, it's gonna need a roof. Hey, nah, this roof's good. Boom, like that, that's gonna tell you if you could sell the, if you could buy the house. Same thing with the foundation. Like, I don't want y'all guys, nobody in here should buy a house without having those four checked first. Okay, 
like don't I don't want y'all losing money. So don't jump into these things. Um, but yeah, for plumbing, I just have them check it first to tell me if I need it or not. This one, it'll probably take us like two months. About two months more or less. Sheesh. All right, man, so we just finished the second house tour. Uh, we're about to go to one more. We're gonna go to a wholesale deal. The first one was an Airbnb that ended up flipping. This one is a house that we might rent or flip. And then uh, we're about to go to a wholesale deal that we got that we're about to actually sell to an investor. So they're getting a little bit of everything. They love it, they said. Uh, we're going over numbers, we're going over everything. So man, stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna guess the AR. We're, I want y'all to guess what the offer should be if you're gonna buy this to as an investment property, all right? So I'm gonna give you all the correct ARV. I already showed y'all the formula and we're gonna guess the, the rehab. All right, so the ARV on this property is 265. Uh, closing date is on the 8th of March. Um, and it's saying that the rehab is all cosmetics. So that in mind, let's see who gets the closest rehab. 175? 175. Well, y'all already y'all already walked it. Y'all already got. Uh, but he's advanced. He's advanced. 1229. No, no, no. We're, I want you to guess the rehab estimate. Like, how much would it cost to fix this? That you, the, the, you see how they just threw the laminate on top of the on top of the tile? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could put you could put like some like a transition piece, but that, you don't do that. Yeah, you don't do that. What do y'all think? What do y'all think the remodel cost is on this property? Y'all got y'all's numbers? Y'all getting it? AC good? AC? I'm not sure. I haven't even looked at it. The Texas boys were here. <laughs> Free bed frame included. What do y'all think? What's y'all's estimate? Rehab estimate? 15? 17? 25? What y'all think? 18. If it was me, I would put a budget of at least. I haven't even been to the backyard. Let me see the side in there. I just feel like everything's half done. Like I would take off all that flooring, all the shower, all the. I would redo everything. Like you can't sell a house like this. I'm gonna look around it real quick. Like you gotta redo a lot of stuff on this house. Though that's when it gets scary. Like cause you think it's okay, but it's not. You know. Then you gotta re. Oh, you can't even go to the backyard. Oh, it's open? Oh. See, they just tore off a deck back here. A little patio. They just, they, tore, they just tore it off. It's probably all rotten. It adds up real fast, I'll tell you that. Whatever you think it is, like on the low, you want to add some more. Because like it's just like a half-done house. You don't know what you're going to run into. You know it had plumbing leaks. You know it had all sorts of stuff. It's just the... Uh, um, it's not, it wasn't taken care of, right? So if it was me and I was looking at it, I would put at least, cause you would think by looking at it, you can get it done for about 15, 18, 20, but I would put at least 25, even up to 30. Cause it adds up quick. Cause if you, if you think 15 and it's 25 and you're only going to make 30, there goes all your, you know what I mean? There goes all your profit. But, um, what we're going to do though, we don't ever want to guess. You don't ever want to do guesswork. So what we would actually do is come through and line item it out, right? We don't, we don't have that right now, but uh, on the calls, that's what we're going to do. So we, I want everybody to, to put on line items, what is what prices, roofing, flooring, painting, siding, everything, so we can come up with an actual line items. So that way we're not guessing at all, right? And we come with a clipboard, and then we can start coming up with a scope of work every house you walk, right? That's how you really want to buy a house. You want a scope of work, and you want a good estimate. So, um, but just to be safe, let's just say 25, right? A safe number. We're at 265. So 265 in work at 70% as 185. 25 in work, 160. That's a safe proper purchase price on this property. What somebody would buy in this neighborhood, you gotta know where you're at. People would buy in this neighborhood all day at 75%, 77%, maybe even up to 80%. So we could probably stretch this out, but we, we want good deals right now. We're trying to sell good deals. So 265, 
times 0 0.75 minus 25. You could probably, we could have probably sold this all the way at 173, 170. We just like, everyone, you gotta throw good deals. You gotta leave meat on the bone sometimes. You know what I mean? That we have a good reputation. So I guess that's why we did this at 165. But honestly, at 265 at 78%, 20, man, we could probably sell this like at 180, honestly. And people, somebody would still make money. Cause look at that, 265 minus 25 in work, minus 180, there's still 60. You're still gonna make at least 45. That's a good flip. All right, guys. Well, if that's everything, shoot, I guess it's a day. And then we'll we'll all get connected in this Facebook group, and then we'll get on the Zoom, two more Zooms, and then we'll all stay in touch in there. Everybody like it? All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. So we just finished our first full day workshop, man. It was amazing. We have 14 hustlers. Some people coming from different parts of the state. And man, all I can say is it was amazing. Like my energy, I gave it all today. I'm, I feel like I just did a marathon. It's crazy. I feel it in my body, man. But I feel like honestly, we're building a great community. We're all going to stay together in a Facebook group that's just for us. And we're going to continue with a few Zoom calls. My goal, honestly, is to help everybody in this group achieve success and financial freedom. Hopefully making, you know, six and seven figures. I think I can teach that. And that's my goal, guys. So I hope y'all like this video and I hope to see y'all at a future Clutch workshop. Make sure y'all send me a DM on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Y'all can find me at JR Clutch on all platforms. All right, guys. I hope to hear from y'all soon and I hope y'all like it. Stay clutch. Find the zone and take advantage of it. You can't stop me.